Hello, welcome to a new video. In this video, it's a very, very big, exciting video for me, and probably some of you as well. Also, I'm filming in 4K. So let's see if we know any to see a difference. I don't know if we will or not, because I'm sure a lot of people don't have 4K K tellies. So, let's see how it goes. If you do notice a difference, let us know, because it's worth knowing. But today, we are doing, today we are doing Jake Breaks. <laughs> Fitting the Jake Breaks to the Cummins in the ERF. So, without further ado, let's get stuck in. Oh, I need to get, if anyone knows where I can get one of these, this is the, the pipe extension that goes in for the cab tilt. Let us know, because I want one. I thought they might drop Paul on message. And also, we have some sad news. Bumper's damaged. If you might have seen in the last, one of the last videos, where I was at Convoy in the Park, and she burst an airline coming into, where we were going into Weatherby, Weatherby, Weatherby potholes. Weatherby potholes are so horrendous. It's like driving on the moon. The craters, not potholes. Oh, and also, in fact, just painted that, just done those two things and they both got marked by Weatherby potholes. So what's happened is, as I've gone in, I've hit a bump, a crater, it probably about 50 mile an hour. Before I actually got into the, into the thing, it just, I didn't see it, it was late at night. And it's compressed the carb, hit the bump, gone past the bump stops, compressed the bump stops, and it smacked the, it snapped an airline, which I'll put the clip in. The airline, to the air horn, the fitting has broken. The fitting has broken. Look at that. So, luckily, I think I've got some of them. If not, I can just get one out there. Oh, I can get it all. But I was about to have full meltdown. Snapped the airline, and it's hit the bumper, cracked the top of the bumper. And also, when it's rocked back, it's obviously hit the MNOX, so I'm going to have to move the MNOX back a little bit. To be honest, it is sitting a little bit wonky there. I think it has shifted from when it's been all apart. So I'm going to square, square it up again. Anyway. Let's make myself happy with some Drake break parts. Cab was up, all the way up. First time I've actually here, ever had a cab all the way up on this. True, I'm always terrified of it again now. You've seen the, you might have seen videos or pictures of them where the cab's gone over on the cab rams, and I'm always terrified of it. Time start looking at this first things i'm going to do is actually look at it assess the job before i dive into it things like i might have to move that jubilee clip that jubilee clip's pointing that way when the space is in that'll probably foul the rock recover i need to clean off around it because it's covered in soda and dirt i need to f this is where i need to turn it over from the, this pulley here so i've got some figuring out to do and then we're going to get stuck into it i'm going to fit some jake brakes i can't wait for this I've been waiting for so long. And hopefully as well, Josh, who I got the Drake Brakes off, Josh Miller, you right, reckon remember him from the channel earlier in the earlier when you dropped the Drake's Brakes off originally. He it should be coming tonight to plug the wagon in to program them. Program them in. And also possibly possibly turn it up. Make all them Cummins and Jake Brake noises. Ha <laughs> ha! Got all the bolts at the rocker cover. And the sun's just disappeared. Now I'm cold. There we are. Just rock free. Come on. Oh, look at that. Cummins-y goodness. A lot cleaner than I thought it would be. She's off. Now, some of you might look at that and think, that oil looks really dirty, but it's not. Look how clean that oil is there. Yes, it's got its black carbonisation-y bits on it, but for an old diesel, that is really clean. Really clean. A little bit of dust fell in. Get that cleaned up, but yeah. Breather, I got my breather off. So... I need to turn this over. Uh, that's injector. This one's an injector. That one will be. I can't remember which side is which. I think. This one's exhaust, I think. That's rocking. That one's not rocking. It's not rocking. So I'm going to have to set all these up again. When, uh, when we get the jakes on, set them all up, set my tablets up. But it's a good thing to do anyway because. It's a service thing, it should be redone as well. I've printed off my information from the computer in case instead of having to have a computer out here, I can just have it on a board. And it also doesn't matter we'd have dirty paws. I will put my gloves on, mate, because this black diesel oil doesn't half stain your paws like it's not good for you. 
But first off, I need to, this is preparation for the engine. Rotate the crankshaft by turning the accessory drive in the direction of rotation clockwise. Align the A valve, so I need to line up the marks. And that will set one, well, you know how it's going to be to do. Turn over big 11 litre Cummins engine by hand with a ratchet. I could put my three foot bar on, but then I would hit that. And I can't do it with this. You just use these guns. There will be a mark on this pulley that will line up with that mark there. Let me finger it. And you'll be able to see. You'll be able to see. This is how tappets work. Push rods. So the cam runs are in, in there, in the bottom. And it's push rods that run on the cam. If you don't know this, teaching you again. Another Philbilly lesson. So when I turn it that way, you'll be able to see. One of the, maybe, one of the things going up and down, one of the rockers going up and down which controls the valves. Woohoo! So, I'm gonna lubricate this end up. I really need a new oil pot. Mine's getting a bit tired, just an old, old oil pot. As old as I can remember, you can see some oil coming. Good old Morris lubricants is normal. This is actually thick. I think it's like 50 and 40. To be honest, that's what I got it anyway, isn't it? Okay, that. So then this goes under that. So I've changed the rockers, the guideless rockers, or whatever you call them, for the Cummins ones. I've just got the other set to do. I'm just undoing the injectors now, because you've got to change the injectors. Inject the set screws from these ones with a cross with a flat head on them on the top to these ones. They're a Cummins, uh, they're a Drake brake one, which goes in, and that is what because you can't get to the screw to set the injector heights with the Drake brakes on, so you have to have these special ones on. I like working on wagons, but I don't think I could be a full time like HUV technician, as the way it's saying. Right, so I've had a right headache now. I've, I've lost like two and a half hours, to be honest. The way I was setting the injectors up, it battered me head. I couldn't figure it out. I went through and I went through a massive rabbit hole of finding out what size there should be and the fittings and the torque specs and everything. And then something just clicked in my head. So what I've done is, I think this is right, going from the book, what it's telling me to do, and also some information that I found on Tintnet. On number one, I've got it set on num on A. So this one, this is where I'm setting the tappets now. And I bottom this one out on the plunger. So I wind it until I can feel a little bit of resistance. And then I back it off two flats because it's on the Jake brake adjusters. So I backed it off two flats, that's 120 degrees, nip it up and that's done. Now I think that's right. From my information that I've got, what I've done, I've information I've read, looked at, all that stuff, I think that's right. There's not much more I can do. It's it's what the Jake Brakes books is telling me to do, it's what the Cummins books tell me to do. So, fingers crossed, that is right. I'm just setting my valves as well. So I've got it on on A, so I'm setting this one here, and then I rotate it on to the next one, which will be this is how you change the heads as well. These the Crossovers, is it the crossovers? I can't remember. So how you change the cross cross thingies for the valves. This is how you change them because you go from one and then you advance it to B on the pulley. Advance to B on the pulley and set number five. And then you advance to C on the pulley and then you do number three. Yeah, it's just the firing order. Because I've written the firing order on my arm. So it's set, you set them in the firing order. I've just twigged that as well. Just twigged it. I'm setting it in the fucking firing order. So of course the injectors are going to be bottomed. The, the injector's going to be bottomed there because it's firing on that one now. Which will mean number three, one, three, will be rocking. <sighs> I've lost so much time on this. Anyway, let's set the in inlet valves. Inlet valves, you need to set to, uh, they're in thou, so I've converted it, and it is, I think it's 35,000, uh, 35, 0 0.35 of a millimeter. I think I, I think I set, converted that right. Whoops. All right, so 
I've already set the exhaust valve up. Set that up, and that's the inlet valve set. I do have torque specs for these, so. And now I've just got to repeat that in the process I've said. One, five, three, six, four, two, four. Fire in order for a Cummins M11. So that's all the top end set up. Injectors are set, the valves are set, all the taps are set up, nipped up and everything. So now I'm just going to clean off the, the rocker box. I'm not going to get it all done tonight. And as you can see, I've, I'm a, uh, can you see? I'm a bit uh, grubby. I'm going to need a good shower tonight. I'll come back in the morning, first thing in the morning, crack onto it then. So here's me spacer. I painted it red because I had red paint. I'm going to give some sealer on. I'm using Wynn's black gasket maker. I've, I'm not 100% sure on sold on stuff yet, but I'm going to use it exactly the way it tells us to use it. So make sure it's clean. I've actually done that. Yep, that's clean. And you put a bead on, you build it together instantly, let it skin for an hour, and then re -torque it. I usually like to use Durko. Durko is the engine gasket sealer that I love to use, but I don't have any. Worst comes to the worst, if it leaks, I take this off, take it off, and I put new stuff on. It all means more content for you guys. Speaking of content for you guys, if you like watching this kind of stuff, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like and subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Subscribing, it is free, so don't worry about that. You can uh, get to follow the project. I'm playing with the wagon, obviously, big old Cummins, the earth, doing stuff like this, fitting Jake brakes, the old F7, the gardeners, stuff like that. So yeah, please. If you like this sort of stuff, hit that subscribe button. It means a lot. Genuinely does mean a lot. So I've got the, the sealery stuff on. It's pretty, The bead's a little bit too big, but I'm doing it exactly as that says to do on the instructions. And then it's not my fault. If Well, it could still be my fault, but it's, it minimises that chance of problems, leakages and all that stuff. So crack on, let's get that bolted onto there. And then I've got to do the torque pattern. I really don't know how much you're going to be able to see there, but I forgot my other tripod again. Whew. And now I need this and one of these. Now I just need to go through it and do the torque sequence. Jake breaks are happening. <laughs> I think it's time for a time lapse. And that's him talked up in the sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eight. There's not that much squidge dude, which is alright. It's leveled out a lot nicer than I thought it would, which is lovely. So I'm gonna let that go off. I'm not gonna touch it. If I touch it, I'll make a mess. We'll let that go off as the book says or as the wind's instructions say for an hour. And I'll come back and we'll retorque it up to 20 newton meters. That's what it says. It is 15 foot pounds or 20 newton meters. Wait, well, I got a horizon leveling on. What do you think? Does horizon leveling work? Because I can watch it working in the camera. It's quite cool. I can put like that. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. What do you think? Does it work? Or does it, is it just annoying? Now it's for the exciting bit. These are labelled front and rears. I put this fitting in for the oil feed as it tells you to. I've lubricated it with the oil rings and stuff. So now, turn the oil ring adapter as in follows. What? How do you how do you tighten an oil ring adapter? Whatever. Install the oil ring adapter in the front housing in the location shown in Figure 12. Oh, it's already done. Ah, yes. Because these aren't brand new, obviously, there's a load of bits already done on them. They're fitted. Pipes are fitted. Feeds fitted, stuff like that, so I don't need to worry about that. On that. So now, 16 bolts, and I've got up at 81 Newton meters. So I've cleaned off the tops. Well, mountain services for the Jake brake where they bolt onto the rocker. Josh was telling us that if you put them on an L10, this is an M11 
or a, a Stella M11, nice ISX, I think. Keep us right in the comments. Uh, it's an ISM, uh, an M11, a Select Plus, stuff like that. They bought on here, but on a L10, the old engines, they bought through the, ro the rocker shafts. So the, the rocker shafts are floating when you put the Drakes on. Obviously filming for TikTok as well, so this is the fun bit, being on your Todd. And that is going to sit on there, like that. That's also why you need to change the injector push rod bolts, because you can't get to them with the screw, you've got to use, so they put these bolts, bolt heads in, so you can get on with the spannering tool. So you inject this up, which obviously we've just done. Ah. That's nothing under there, we're good. So I want that. That needs to join together. There we, ooh, my finger's in there. Ooh, ah, 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 ah finger. Finger got stuck there. Got the bolts in, I did drop one and have a massive panic, but luckily I had my magnet and pulled it out. Got my torque wrench, 60 foot pounds or 81 newton meters, and now I need to torque them up. I've even got a proper M10, 10 millimeter, proper spline. How cool is that? So I've got to go one. I don't like filming with two cameras, obviously, GoPro's on for YouTube. And I'm filming through for, for, for TikTok and Instagram and stuff. It's baffling my little mind. Woo. One, I'll start on the right one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, it's easy. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I, oh, I've done that wrong already. It's because I'm filming and talking. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just going to go around that again. Click, 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 click. Hey, and now to repeat that on the front. So we've got a good time going. Got a cup of tea. We've got Jake Brakes, got Cummins, ERF, some sunshine. It comes and goes. Get into setting up the slave pistons. So I've got to set these up to 15 thou. I need to find out what that is in millimeters because I don't have thou gauges. But it needs to be the piston. The exhaust valve needs to be closed. So I need to. Do the whole engine rotation thing again. I don't need to start when it on to A again. I can start on the one I finished on because the engine hasn't moved. So I'm going to start on four, which is on C, and then I'll go on to A, which will be one. One, five, three, six, two, four. Let's crack on. Let's get that done. Filming again for both. So setting the starting on number four because that's the one I finished on. So I know that one's on the the exhaust valve on the rock. Setting up the slave backlash on the Jake heads. So let's get crack on. We've got me to feel a gauge. I'm gonna stick that doing in there and get that set up. Really, really awkward. Keep willing to have feel it start to drag. There, that's the one. And I'll talk these up later. You feel a gauge is in between the slave, which is here. Touching on the top of the, the rocker shaft on the cross head. So let's get another five done. So the top end is set up. All the slaves have been set. Now it's time for the oil feed. Now I've got to get this on. I've got to move around the other side. There's a bung I need to take out of the filter housing. And you put that in and then you run the pipe up to there. Time to get the oil pipe on. I've got the fitting in. Squidging your arm through there. It's in the back there we can't see. But it wasn't too bad to do. I thought it would have been worse. Fitting brackets seem to be at the top. I'll, put, I'll run the route and see which way it works best, I think. This is a big bit missing there. It's there. The temptation to leave it off and blast and paint it while I'm on is very, very, very high. 
but I'm not going to do that right now. I could actually. No. Another day. Another day. One job at a time. One job at a time. And then also when I'm on, I'll clean all this off and give it a good wire brush off. Because I can't blast it. I'm not going to take the internet off because I'm going to put new gaskets and everything in. So I've got the oil pipe on. It's there. Everyone's doing the back. Both sent the, the points. Oh, I need to put a nut on that one. I need to remember, but you need to put a nut on that. The arm's getting red raw. Everyone's doing there, doing there. And not that fitting doing there. I wasn't quite happy because it, it's pulled the pipe towards the block. So what I've done is, I've got a bit of fuel, fuel pipe. Split it in the middle. Put it over the top, there's a bit of conduit, a bit of protection for against it chafing against the block. It shouldn't chafe, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather do that than be driving down the road and drop all my oil pressure and oil everywhere. The wiring's on, it's all done, dusted. I'm getting dirty face again, dirty paws. I've cleaned the inside of the rocket cover route. It actually sells you the firing order in it. One, five, three, six, two, four. I like that, that's cool. I've got the clean the gasket off, put the gasket back on. I'm going to bolt it back together. Like I say, I haven't got a new gasket for it, so I'm putting the old one on. If it's not right, I'll just get a new one again, but sometimes I find cheap aftermarket gaskets are worse than trying to reuse a good gasket that you knew was good. The, sometimes, you, it's, like, um, it's like trying to catch water with a sieve, sometimes using a, a, a bloody aftermarket gasket. Rocker cover's on, just got to torque it down, same sequence as the spacer. And then I've got to build, put the intake pipe back on, intake back on. Intake pipe's back on. That's going to go in the bin soon. This goes in the bin, you can see the pipe running down there. A bit. And doing it there. All tied up and, and safe with some pipe wrapped around it to save it from chafing on anything. It did pay me to put this back on, I'm not going to lie, because I really want to blast and clean it, but I'm going to do it. I don't know what colour I'll do it. Whether I'll do it black again, or whether I do it red to match that and then do white ERF. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool wouldn't it? On a bit you're never gonna see but it's just cool. You know what I'm like. And if you don't know what I like you'll sh you'll soon figure it out. <laughs> Have it red and I can paint the ERF in like that. What do you think? I think that'd be pretty cool. Breather's back on. Or well, pipe's back on. Wiring looms are done. Guns in there. Connects to in the back of there. And like I say, that's all going to come off and get in the bin soon because that's the old exhaust brake, which is never worked in the first place. Well, it worked, but it was pants. It doesn't actually work, if you know what I mean. Straight off the turbo, out the back, and then straight across the back of there because I want to have a, an A-frame on so I can run the pipes, run the exhaust pipe sh sh straight into the Eminox there. It'd be fair if I could find another Eminox the same as that. I would even think about twin M and Ox in it. Same as that. Two pipes. That'd be pretty cool, but lots and lots of money. Because they're not cheap. Oh. And I would say I could straight pipe it, but the thing is, I like the look of the M and Ox. It would also have to match this one. So, the other option is at some point, if I did get big enough on here where it's making enough money with the likes of Trucker Tim, who's making he that's his job now his job is just playing with his wagon that's the dream in it if i got to a point where i was big enough i would go to truck max and say make us a nice exhaust and i want it to be spec like that just straight at the back two tailpipes same as that same height pretty much doubling that but that's a lot of pennies and there's a lot more other things i'd rather spend the money on first when i've already got one lovely eminox cabs down and she's running Guess who forgot to press record? Done it again. I think she actually sounds a little bit quieter as well. A little bit less tappy. Obviously, you're going to be a little... now it's been adjusted. Gonna... There's less float on them tappets, so let that run for a bit. And then just want to make sure there's any oil leaks and stuff. It's all in good oil pressure, so yeah. I don't know where I put my switches and my foot pedal. I think they're at home in the garage. I thought I brought them down, but I can't find them anywhere, so... That's a bugger, innit? Right, so we're down on... It's been uh, a week. I've been on holiday. I'm actually on holiday at the minute. But Jack's here. He's over there. He's walking around. While we're down here, I'm going to get my switches plugged in. 
see whether the ECU, because it's got a different ECU on it from when it was originally built, because as a lot of them have been now, the ECU has been spiked when it's been jump started. So I'm taking the switches off. Let's plug them in and see what happens. I've also got my foot pedal here, and I might, if I have a chance, quickly recon that. But I also might just plug it in for the minute, see if it works. So I got the switches in. I did put them in the wrong place. I put them in the top instead of the bottom. Kind of purpose by accident because I put the home button there. I thought, oh, I'll just pop them up there, and that fills that row up. But then forgetting that the wiring loom is made for them to be down there. And then when I try to change them, they were really stuck, so that can be fixed another day. I've got the foot pedal, which isn't bolted in yet because I really want to recon it, but it's plugged in. So now I see, need to see if I can get it started because the batteries have dropped down on it again. And the radio keeps coming on. It's possessed. Genuinely, not touching anything, radio will just randomly turn on. So then we need to... I've read the instructions to bleed them up. I need to put them on. Leave the switch in low. Accelerate up to about 1800 RPM and let off the throttle. Right, that's what it says. We've done what it says on the boot, so... Now I don't know whether these are programmed in this ECU or not, so I'm just plug them in to see if it works. Fingers crossed. And to be honest, it doesn't seem like they are. Pick them up to two. I guess they're not plugged in, but we'll double check, we'll double check. We have progress. So, I have been I stripped and restored my pedal. I can't remember how much I filmed because it's been such a drawn out process recently where I've been doing bits and bats here and there again. Every, if I get 10 minutes, I'm busy. If I don't have 10 minutes, I'm doing nothing. As we pedal, I blasted and painted it. I've cleaned out the inside of it, I've put new grip tape on, which isn't great, but it's okay for the minute. And I've also had top signs. I've had top signs make me a new Drake Brake sticker, with the, the whole, all the writing on the part number and everything. Copy from the original, so it's as close as it can be. I've even got some extras to go with it. Even got some extras as well, so I'm going to be selling them off. If anyone needs some, let me know. I'll get them posted out to you as soon as I can. I'll have a think how much I'm going to be charging for them and I'll put it in the video on here. How much I'm going to be charging for those stickers posted. Onto the wagon. So, I want to grab my phone before I forget where it is and lose it. Take these three bolts out and this exhaust. In fact, I may be able to just take that off. I don't know. Take that off and that sits over the top like that. Just like that. Hunky dory, spotty dog. Jeep brake noises. Woohoo! So I've got the, the old exhaust brake valve out. Uh, that was a headache. I didn't film it because, to be honest, I lost my camera and it was sitting there. <laughs> I lost my camera. So I've got that out. I'm going to put the new one back in, the new the, the Drake brake button back in, Drake brake pedal back in. But I'm going to put a new, couple of new bolts in. Yes, I've just been sprayed. I et uh, cleaned it off, etched it because I had to heat this up and burnt the paint off. Etched it and just put a bit of black can on it for the minute to cover it up, make sure it's not bare metal. It's not as I normally would want to do it, but I also want to pull the carpets out again, properly strip the floors, treat them, proper prime them, and paint them properly. Also, good news, I don't think there's any more water ingress. We've had some quite heavy rains, and I can't, the floor is not wet where it was, so I'm hoping that the floors being wet were just from how get jumping in with damp boots. Just on trimming up the mat because obviously you need to trim this mat so the new pedal fits in. I'm just going to trim this up. Big hole. Looks like a pee. For my name. Pedals in, mats in. I've even cut off a bit of the excess 
and put it back in so it covers up the little space there there'll be a gap there if i take it out see that click that back in there and it just looks so much nicer and more finished like that look at that man much better i'm gonna have to trim up my brown floor mat my foot mat but that's not the end of the world i think as i said before i think they're only 10 quid off tiktok shop and i bought them so i'm not bothered with chopping them up if i had some proper ones like the ones i want to get from harrison trim supplies eventually i'd be quite upset if i have to chop them up in fact i don't think i would chop them up i'd send them back down and say can you fix it please it is time to head off to carlisle to go see Well, I'm outside Josh's yard now, so just got to wait for him to come out and come out with his laptop. -o. So, we've got the main man here doing magic stuff for the computer. This is exciting now. I'll be going home going all the way home. Rev, rev. So, I'm just on the way back to the yard now. Fortunately, they're not working. We don't have Jake brakes. I can't make Jake brake noises yet. Just turn the radio down a little bit more. Which is really unfortunate and I'm genuinely gutted. I'd be honest, I think Josh is good for me as well because we were both excited. There we go. Brings up an engine and warning light when I try and use the Jake brakes. So we've been looking at the Cummins Insight. And we have come to the conclusion there's a wiring fault somewhere. The Jakes are drawing too much current. And got the window down, so I'm going to be climbing a hill in a second. <laughs> Listen to that! Listen to that! Anyway, back to what I was saying. So, me and Josh have looked at it through the Cummins Insight computer. They're programmed in. They're set to come on. I haven't set them up to come in when the vehicle's stationary because I'm not bothered about doing that. They never sound right when they're stationary anyway. Rolling is where you want it to be. Uh, I'm just put the window back up to the cold now. There we are. So we set the Jake's up. She's now turned up to around 405 to 410 horsepower. We're in that 400 mark. We've got 400 and, I'm gonna say 410, because she'll breathe a bit easier with that exhaust on. Say 410 horses pulling and one donkey driving. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna head off back to the yard because I need to do some wiring diagnostics. Obviously not today, it is quarter past nine. Well, I'm back at the yard. Here we are. And I've also just noticed that the bolt or screw in my driver's steer. Can't see any bubbles. Must have got a split there. Must have ran over something. And the bolt's gone in, it's split there. Oh. Okay. There's no bubbles there. There's no hissing. So, usually, once you've wiggled them a little bit, it would hiss and hiss at you. And how bloody lucky is that? So now I'm going to mark that and I'll just put, I'll fill that block up now. The jigs aren't actually working. We have had an actual, it has been an okay run because one, it means I've been able to test drive the wagon for a good run, make sure it's running all right. Uh, now it's out of the top end setup. There's no, I can't see any oil leaks anywhere, but I'll double check that when the cab's fully up. 
now I've got a new airbox to replace the knackered one that I've, that's on mine. I've also run it with the mid-lift down a little bit to clean the brakes up. Make sure they're all working. Spin the wheel bearings, get the tyres rotated. Everything warm through, brakes warm through all throughout. And the jigs are actually working. But not working, if that makes sense. So they're in, they're programmed. She's now got more horsepower. She runs mint, crisp and clean and pulls like a train. Got to figure out what the bloody hell's going on in there somewhere. So we're in the next day. I got home at half ten last night. Bang's there, I haven't touched it. But my battery's on charge because I want to keep them topped up because this cold weather's knackered in them. I think this one's duff to be honest. This is the bit I didn't want to do. I'm going to call it a day on this video. I didn't want to make it a two-parter, but the way things are going, I want this video, this, I'm going to make it a two-part video because we've got as far as we can at the minute without diving in and find big, find out what's going on. I want this, I want to get this video out to you now so you get progress. ERF updates. And the next video is going to be figuring out why they're not working. I'm going to go do th through the wiring looms, check all them off. Uh, I might pull the top, the rock cover off, check all the wiring looms in the head, which I put in. Maybe re even renew and make new ones. So, unfortunately, no drag break to end the video. But, progress is good. At least we got new parts. Woohoo! So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. I know I really enjoyed making that video, apart from this bit at the end where I drove home and I couldn't go all the way down hills. But it is what it is. You can't win them all. Please, uh, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for if you do enjoy this kind of stuff, because I enjoy making it. So I'm going to keep doing it. And hopefully soon we'll be able to go with Cummins noises and big break noises. But yeah. So. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for watching. In fact, thank you, thank you very, very much for watching. And Tarafa now.